I will start the discussion. You will enjoy the overview. You know, the Quran is like, you can give the overview of the oceans or you can go into the details of the drops. So this will be more like an overview of the ocean, of the flow of the ocean. So inshallah, I hope uh, those of you that are reading Quran at home and following along with its translation will be able to make these connections that I'm going to share with you. Because unfortunately, there's, Quran is so deep that even what I think an average Muslim should know, uh, they don't. So, Bismillah um, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Of course, uh, the Quran starts with Fatiha, but before Fatiha, there's a general rule of Quran. We say, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. And then, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And the basic rule here is always in Quran, is that you remove the harm first. And then you start with what is good. And you will find this in another, in, in the same surah, in another part, which I might re refer to later on. But anyhow, after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts in Surah Fatiha. And in Fatiha, you're asking for guidance. And the answer to that guidance is the rest of Quran. So that's why Quran then says, This is the book that you're asking for. This is the book that's the guidance. And over here, I want to mention that Fatiha, you know, you have the, uh, the praise of Allah in the beginning, and then the amud of the whole Qur'an, the theme of the whole Qur'an, the purpose of the whole Qur'an, which is to become an abd of Allah, a servant of Allah, right? So that's, And you will see then after that, this is going to be interesting for you. Ihdina sirat al mustaqim is, is, the opposite of that is walad the opposite of that is those who have gone astray versus who are on the right path. But in the middle, these two are connected. So, the path of those who are guided, not those who have earned your anger. So, those two are connected. And those who have earned Allah's favor versus those who have earned His anger. So then after Fatiha, of course, you say Ameen. Then Surah Al-Baqarah begins. Surah Al-Baqarah starts with basically telling you that, look, there are going to be three responses to this Qur'an. There are going to be people who are going to believe. There are going to be people who are just going to deny it. And there are going to be people who say they believe, but they don't really believe. Okay? So the first five ayat are about the people that believe. And the most important thing that I want to share with you in that is <laughs> Those who believe in the unseen. Because the essence of wisdom begins with understanding that there is a reality beyond what you can see. Essence of wisdom begins with understanding that there is a reality beyond what you can hear and perceive. This is where the idea of God and religion and the hereafter begins with. So, this is the book for guidance. And the basis of it is that you accept that there is an unseen world which is al ghaib It is the absolute. It is the definitive. It's absolute. This world is not absolute. al ghaib that world, the unseen world, is the real world. By al ghaib okay? And then Allah describes the believers and Allah says they're the successful. By the way, over here I will also mention, This also connects with Sultan Ali Ibrahim because the Prophet named al Bakra and Sultan Al Imran Al Zahrawain. And both these surahs are very interconnected. The Sultan Al Bakra discusses the Jews, Sultan Al Imran discusses the Christians. Both the surahs start with Alif Lam Mim. Both the surahs end with big du'as. Both of the surahs end with du'as. Both in Sultan um, Al Bakra, the emphasis is jihad. The Emphasis in Al Imran is Qital, fighting, the, because Badr is mentioned in uh, Al Imran, or according to some scholars, Oh, is mentioned. Either way, an actual battle is mentioned. And the common element between both of these surahs is the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is that guidance that we're praying for. Actually, these are four surahs one Makki, Fatiha, and then you have Bakra, Al Imran, and then what? Nisa and then Ma'idah. These four, the main theme of these five surahs is the Sirat al Mustaqim, the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, now after giving you these three categories of people, look, there are going to be three responses. There are going to be people 
that other people will think they're crazy. How come they believe in this? Why do you believe in Muhammad and you're willing to give everything up for Muhammad sallallahu And other people who think that they're worldly wise, oh, you know, we're going to follow it, but not fully, right? And then those people that are opposed. Then after this, three groups are given, then the call is given, the call of Qur'an. Ya ayyuhal nas, u'budu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum. O mankind, become slaves of your Lord who created you. وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ And those before you. And then after this, the challenge is given. Look, if you still doubt this is not from Allah, then produce something like this Qur'an. وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ مِمَّا نَزَلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا فَأْتُوا بِسُورَةٍ بِمِثْلِهِ Then after this, you know, it is said that there's a few topics that I'm going to skip, but then after that, the main topic is the creation of Adam Why? That also has many aspects, but the one that I want to emphasize is arrogance. And there's a difference between arrogance and pride. Arrogance is always in comparison to the other. This is what the idea of takabbur is. You, you're trying to become bigger than someone else. Pride is al-izzatu lillahi wa rasulihi wa lil mu'mineen. Izzat, honor, is self-contained. It's about you, yourself. And takabbur is about you in comparison to somebody else. Particularly when you have a low self-esteem or you have a feeling you're less than someone else, but you're trying to compete with them and become bigger. You know, Donald Trump has this problem. Anyway, that's a separate issue. So, the Taqur versus Izza. So, over there, Adam al Islam versus Shaytan. Shaytan had the problem of the Taqur. So, the first disease of the heart that is mentioned in some detail in the Quran is the problem of the Taqur, is the first. Because that was the problem of Bani Israel, which is the next topic. They couldn't accept Muhammad is from somewhere, someone outside the Jewish lineage. They couldn't accept that. And so it diluted them from the truth. When, you, when you're so high that you can't see truth anymore, this deludes you. And then after this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, look, we said Adam. Adam was prone to making mistakes in the same way you're prone to making mistakes. Therefore, you need what? Guidance. This is also a major theme in Quran. You know, the subject of Qur'an is man. The call of Qur'an is ibadah. Right? And the, you can say the, the theme of Qur'an as a whole is guidance. It's hudal lil muttaqin. Then after this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Bani Israel. Now, Bani Israel was the ummah between Musa and Isa. And they had different ups and downs. Okay? And they responded to the call of the Messenger of Allah in different ways. But Allah starts with a charge sheet. I'm going to make this very simple. Allah said, look, I gave you manna and salwa, I saved you from Fir'aun, I did this for you, you did this. You took the calf for worship, I did this for you and you did this. And then Allah describes in detail how their hearts over time, just, you know, there comes a point that you want to, you become, you become irritated even from Islam. Someone says pray, you become irritated at so as Allah is describing two things about Bani Israel, which is their internal problems, meaning their love for dunya. Uh, Each one of you wants to live a thousand years. But you won't, even if you live that, you can't save yourself from the punishment of Allah. In another place, Allah said, <laughs> They threw the book of Allah behind their backs as if they did not know. But over time, uh, Allah, you know this, uh, 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 Allah orders you to kill the cow. Right? Do you take us as a joke? They start taking Allah's ayat, His commandments, it's a joke. So the, what I was saying, you remove the harm first. First, Allah shows you, these people before, they had all these diseases, right? They had all this love for dunya, and I'm just enumerating just a few. They had these diseases, and look, what happened? When they were good to me, I made them go high in dunya. They had Suleiman and Daud. When they were bad to me, I made them, and it had, so the correspondence between your izza and dunya is related to the diseases in your hearts. When the diseases of your hearts are cured, you're automatically going up. When the diseases in your hearts increase, you're automatically going down. In this, Allah is telling, is, is the Qur'an has two assumptions, very quickly. How much time do I have? Um, it's, you have ten, ten minutes right now. So. Okay, good. I have five more minutes? Okay, good. 
There are two assumptions Quran starts with. Number one assumption Quran starts with, which is very interesting, it's very miraculous when you think about this. Quran starts with two assumptions. Number one, the thing Quran assumes is the Quran is in the form of a book, which it wasn't at the time of the Prophet. And number two assumption Quran starts with is that the Quran assumes that there is already a Muslim, active Muslim community that is interacting with the world. So in this sense, Quran is inter telling us how to interact with the Ahlul Kitab, the people of the book, the Jews. Right? And the Quran is using the word Kitab for Quran, which it wasn't in the time of the Prophet. And in this assumption, so this is, it's telling the Muslim Ummah how you have to interact but at the same time, it's telling us a second thing, how not to behave like them, by giving us their history. But at the same time, something else is happening. This is also very important. It is also t telling the Jewish community that, look, this is your history, and this is very, very important. How many people have ever heard of the idea Christians have of the New Covenant? There is the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, and the New Testament. What is this really about? I want to share with you something that you'll find very interesting. Because the word for this in Qur'an, for mithaq, in, in Qur'an is mithaq. Mithaq alladhi wathaqakum bih. Wa idha khadna mithaqakum wa rafa'na fawqakum al-tur. We took a covenant from the people of Bani Israel. We took a promise from them. And then they betrayed that promise. And this is why we are now replacing that ummah with a new ummah. And I want to uh, share with you something that's in the Bible from, uh, from Isa alayhi salatu wasalam that actually uh, talks about this. Um, let me get it quickly, inshallah. Yes. In Matthew chapter 21, verse 43, Jesus says, Therefore I say unto you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. Meaning, if you don't bring out the fruits, that you know, know the tree by its fruits, it's a famous Bible quote. If you don't bring out the good deeds that your ummah is supposed to have, then Allah will replace you with another nation. And who is saying this? The last prophet of Bani Israel, the last Rasul of Bani Israel, who was a hujjah upon them, so to say. He's saying, look, if you don't do what, the, what you're supposed to do, then Allah is going to replace you with another people. This is why the Quran goes on to say, They know the prophet like they know their own children. This is, of course, a whole different topic. But I want to just mention another part of the Bible. Luke chapter 3 verse 9, Jesus said, The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not pr produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. So Jesus was already saying, and before Jesus, many of the other prophets of Bani Israel were saying, Look, if you don't do tawbah to Allah, if you don't turn to Allah, Allah is going to remove you and, and replace you by another people. Who is that other covenant? That is the Prophet Muhammad from the lineage of Ismail Anyway, so this point is being made in this in the beginning of part of what he just yet read. Ya Bani Israel, how much time do I have? Two minutes left. So, well, that's that. Explain that one too. When you explain the other one. Um, okay, I will explain it. That ayah does not mean what people think it means. Usually, people take it to mean. Indeed, those who believe amongst the Christians and the Jews and the Sabbath who believe in Allah in the Day of Judgment, they will be saved. It doesn't mean that. Because if it meant that, it would say, Then everyone would be included. Over here, there's only two brackets. One bracket. Is the second bracket. So because of this, this is equal to this with certain conditions, which I won't go into right now. But the last two minutes, I just want to mention, Bani Israel's errors are shown, and then after this is the topic of what? When this covenant is changed, it's changed how? It's changed by the Tahwil al-Qibla, changing of the Qibla. So then the second juice starts with, um, the second juice starts with, سَيَقُولُ السُّفَهَاءُ مِنَ النَّاسِ مَا وَاللَّهُ مَنْ قِبْلَ ذِهُمُ الَّذِي كَانُوا عَلَيْهَا And changing of the Qibla meant, now there will be a new sharia, a new law, and we will be reading some of the ayahs regarding that today, and then I will go into more details tomorrow. So this is Fatiha, the three categories of the people, the Qur'an, its call, Adam, and then Bani Israel.